what we're going to do is we're going to do the web browser UI. And while I understand that working from the command line is more technically appropriate for the job, at this point, because we're having a lot of problems with the command line, going to the HTTP interface is going to just make our jobs tons easier, okay? So when everybody's logged into their router and they're ready to go to the command line, right? what you want to do is you want to go into config. All right, and then what you want to do is you want to enable your HTTP server, router, you're in config, you're God, and you want to do IP HTTP server, and that enables the web server on the system. All right. How many people have typed that in so far? One team down. I have four more teams to go. All right, so we got one down. Who else am I waiting on? What? I'm going to have you guys use the HTTP server because it will just make your life a lot easier on this. So it basically it's a web browser that you can go through and do all the, the if, configuration with. So once we, so if we use it, the HTTP console to do this, we can always go back and look at our command line to see. I mean, you can always go back to the command line to see, okay. but because. see what it changed, because obviously. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you are going to, if you as a team want to be more comfortable working at the command line, by all means, I encourage that, right? Go I run. Just, I just feel that, I mean, eventually the, the command line. What, the exactly. command line is what everyone's going to want you to know how to do. But I need to. We need to we need move a line. little bit. I gotcha, yeah. We totally. just need to move a little bit faster than what we've got going. All right. So has everybody done IP HTTP configure and his router config? I have one team. Who else? We're there. There's two. How are you guys? Are you there yet? Have you done it? Yes or no? All right. Rack seven. Have you done it? Yes or no? Rack six. Have you done it? Yes or no? You want to go into router config. You want to type in IP space HTTP server. When you're in config. Rack six, how are we doing? Sun Angel. It will be. That's not a bad idea. I'll put it in Angel here in just a minute. Do you want it in Angel now? What's that? Do you want it in Angel now? No, I, well, I can just follow the link there, too. I mean, no, if you guys just want to go ahead and do all this, and you don't mind hanging out for everybody else, just go do it. It's up. It's there. You're welcome. All right, Rack 3, how we doing? Rack seven, how we doing? You're done. Rack six, how we doing? All right, for those of you that are ready to move on to the next step, you want to enable local. All right, the next step tells how HTTP servers or people are authenticated, and you want to go local. All right, so you're going to do IP HTTP authentication local. All right, and how that's going to look when you actually get there is this. I, so this is exactly what it's going to look like. So that's what you're going to type in, right? IP HTTP authentication AAA. Next line, AAA authentication login default local because you want to maintain all your users right there at the command line. Triple A is not enabled? If you don't have Triple A on, turn on Triple A just like you did with the rest of it. Rack three, are you guys in your router yet? Yes. Have you typed in IP HTTP? All right, that means you guys are in Angel. You've got it. I posted the link to Angel. All right, 
Rack six, how we doing? All right, now this is where you can really screw your day up. Who can log into my router using the HTTP interface? If you, s <laughs> God, this is gonna be so easy to screw up. All right, so if you do IP access list standard 20, all right, that's the, what's assigned to the HTTP server, you can give it a block of IP addresses that are authorized to log in via HTTP. If you choose one IP address, that's okay. If you choose a class C, that's okay. Class B, that's okay. I'm gonna ask you to do a class C, all right? That way anyone on the 203, 210, 192, 206, 198, oh Jesus Christ, 192, 168, 203. Right, so I want you to do, if I could just do this one line here, this will specify the whole class C for 192.168.203. So you're going to do router on a standard NACL permit 192.168. Zero zero space zero dot zero two five five two five five. Right? Nope. We're just gonna trust me. Okay. Trust me on this one. I'm asking you to do class B. Okay. Class B. Class B. So IP HTTP access class, right? Access list number. I would make a new number up and I would call it like like 110 or like 120, right? If you call your ACL 120, at least that ties into your HTTP service, right? Kind of like one of those kind of had to make yourself a little bit happier kind of things. Are you guys listening to me back there in Rack 3? What did I just say? We were wanted it to be Class B. I want it to be Class B. What I am recommending is that you have to give it an access list number, right? Mm -hmm. I am recommending 120 because that will tie into the 20 service that you're using with HTTP. That's not 211, is that? Well, you have to give it an access list number. 120. 120, okay. because then it will tie into that. This is an access list because most access lists start with number one right. and then 20 for your HTTP service. Gotcha. So like access list 101, is, is everything I'm going to allow through this router. Access 102 is usually deny all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Access list 103 is usually any special cases. All right. right. Access list 120, you go, oh, service 20 is my HTTP service. Gotcha. Okay. Right. So again, it's that idea of understanding how ACL's naming conventions work. Right. It's kind of a funky way of doing it. But. It's 120, it's one. Yeah. 20. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All access lists start with the number one by convention just by convention. It doesn't mean that this is a normal thing, but when you hit your Cisco tests, they're going to ask you about ACL 101, and that's everything you're going to allow. And then they're going to ask you about 102, which is everything you're going to deny. And then 103, all your special cases. Yes, sir. Okay, you guys are going to have to wait then until we can get all this stuff worked out and we can sit down with you guys and do this. All right, so did everybody else do this? Now the one thing they say too is IP access list standard 20, and that's cool if you want to do it this way. 20, 120. But I want to stay with the same naming convention across the board so we don't get confused, right? So you can do IP access list standard 120, and you're good to go, right? Yep. So. All right. All right. I'm going to pause this for a minute and help out with rack three. All right. So. Right. You do your IP access list standard twenty. Everyone's done that. We're good. Right. Then you go into config standard NACL. So config standard. Yes. Hold on, J Jacob. You're going to have to like speak uh, much louder so I can hear you. No, remember how your IP works. 
first one is class A, second one is class B. If there's nothing following that, it's still a class B. Then by specifying zero and zero in the A and B space on the subnet, you're giving it that whole class B range to play around with. All right, so rack three, you guys are good? All right, let me pause this thing again. All right, so now we're going to set our port up. The silliness of the whole thing would be to choose port 80, because this is the first thing a hacker's going to go for, port 80. So everyone in the classroom is going to use the same port. We're going to use 8080. All right, that at least gives us a somewhat of a two-second speed bump. Yes, sir? You could use any unknown port, right? You could use any port on the whole known world, but you want to make it consistent across yeah. the entire enterprise. Got it. Okay, and so that might be confusing if you just pick some random ass port to go and. Yes, whatever. if you pick some random ass port somewhere on the face of the planet, like 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 fourteen million, yeah, 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 that would be an issue. Okay. Right, but if whatever port number you pick, make, make it consistent across okay. the enterprise. So for this enterprise in here, everyone will use eighty eighty. All right, and so is it that easy? Yes. To walk in on port eighty and open up my router. No. But, but what we want to do is on the security evaluation, if they see port 80 bumping on your router, right, they're going to go, oh, okay, they've got the HTTP interface. Doesn't mean that scanner won't look at port 8080 either, right? Ideally, I would have chosen something like, you know, like a little bit odder, right, across the board somewhere like in like 1900, like 1921, something that looked more like a printer port, something in the printer port series. Okay, but it's still, it's easy enough to pick up. It's easy enough to pick it's up. Like obfuscating your uh, wireless. Yeah, yeah. it's easy enough to pick up. Even if you obfuscate the port, it's still going to be easy enough to pick up. But it's an extra step. It's an extra step. Yes, sir. You still have to have a username and password. That's why we went local. Right, because if I had gone with something like an external, like an Active Directory or something else, then I may be able to intercept those passwords in the clear. At least if I'm going local, everything's local. Those passwords won't cross the, the wire inside the corporation. Right? So everybody got IP, HTTP port, space, 8080, and hit enter, correct? All right. Now the real question is, did you do this? Do you already have an IP address for your router? Did you configure ETH0 with an IP address? 192.168.203. Whatever? Yes. All right. Now your your goal is to go to. Someone give me a router. 192.168.203.253. All right. Then colon 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 8080. And if it worked, it worked. And let's hope this works. Come on, monkey. You can do it. Then we need to go back and figure out what we did wrong. So remember, there's always syslog with Cisco. Right, you can go through your logs. All right, taking too long to respond. No, because that authenticated everyone on that class B, 192, 168, anyone that comes in with those first two numbers should be able to get to this thing, right? So let's go and just start troubleshooting this bad boy and see where we messed up. All right? But that's basically how to set it up. Now we're going to spend the rest of the night troubleshooting this thing. All right.